Hey friends, welcome back to the Hello Awesome podcast. JC Lee Pulford here. Are you surprised to hear my voice again? <laughs> here I am another week behind the mic. Um, feels good. But, um, you know, it has been nice. It has been really nice taking a podcast break and coming on here recently to share other podcasts where I've been a guest so if you haven't listened to those episodes, I encourage you to please go check them out. You are going to find such new, amazing podcasts and um, check out the episodes that they have. God is really facilitating some awesome conversations in the kingdom, and um, I really don't want you to miss out on those. But I wanted to just check in because for over a year the Lord has opened the door for me to serve on our church's ministry team. I know I have mentioned this before. It has been a very beautiful and a very humbling season of ministry for me, you know, to preach behind a pulpit and to serve the church and to um, share what the Lord has given you is really not for the faint of heart. Most of the time, the real work is in the preparation and the prayer beforehand. There is a lot of self-sacrifice and the laying down of pride and other things that you didn't know existed in your own heart. And I'm still learning that process. But I am so grateful for the team that I have, for the people who love me and pour into me and who believe in this calling. It really hasn't been easy but it has been a blessed one. And, you know, lately I was thinking about this podcast and this space. It has been a long time since I laid it down and gave it to God the way that he asked. And I no longer take podcast uh, sponsors. I don't make money through this podcast. I just um, ask that you look on Amazon for my books and go see what I have going on there. But, uh, I really want this to always be an encouragement for you. And I believe in the past episodes that are here. And I know that God's word does not return void. And all of the conversations are still relevant, no matter how long it's been. Um, but I have been thinking about this community. And I felt it would be okay to begin sharing with you some audio from the lessons that I've taught at my own church and so I presented that uh, to my pastor and uh, with his permission from Brother John Readout, who's my awesome pastor and um, such an encourager. And I mean, he just gives it to me real and I appreciate that. Um, I'm going to do just that. So uh, I believe that this is a continuation of my testimony. You all have had a front seat to what God has done in my life. And I want him to get all the glory. Uh, I don't share these messages because I think I'm great. Um, but I will say that the Lord has done great things. And so I hope that this will encourage you to choose God's will over your own. This is to encourage you to follow the calling that he has given to you, to do it scared, and that he will give you the boldness and the strength to make it through. Psalms 19.7 says, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. You know, a testimony means a witness. And we are to be a witness of the Lord. And so everything that I do, I really hope and pray that it is to be a witness unto the Lord and not unto myself. And this is something that I'm going to have to be careful of and make sure that wherever I show up and wherever I serve, that I give him the glory always. And so I really hope that these messages will be just that, a witness to the Lord. So my friend, please be blessed. Don't forget to take a screenshot, tag me on Instagram at Hello Awesome Live, so that you can testify how God is using this word to bless you. I'm not sure if I'm going to have a message to share every week. I'm going to be honest with you. I know we used to do that, but um, any new episodes will still drop on Monday like before. I just can't guarantee it's going to be every week. So just keep your eyes peeled and your heart open. And thank you again for showing up and being here time and time again. All right, so I'm going to share with you 
my latest message titled Waiting for Another One. Have you ever thought about what the 99 was doing as they were waiting for the one? You know, we tend to think of ourselves as the lost sheep that Jesus went to find. And we were at some point, right? We were that lost sheep and sometimes we could be lost still. But what about being part of the 99 waiting? Well, this is what the Lord shared with me and what I shared with our congregation. And may God use this to speak into your heart and ignite a fire for those lost sheep that we are waiting to come home. Here is episode number 159 that I am calling Waiting for Another One. Hey guys, I'm JC. Are you ready for real conversations about faith, business, and life? Me too. This is the Hello Awesome podcast, where I bring forth topics and truthful insights that will encourage you to make intentional choices and pursue God with your whole heart. Are you ready to say hello to the awesome blessings that God has for you? All right, let's do this. Thank you so much for supporting these faith-based businesses these last four years. If you want to continue supporting anything, well, how about buying some of my books? If you go on Amazon, just type in my name, JC, J-A-C-Y, Pulford, P-U-L-F-O-R-D, and you will find all of my titles right there on Amazon. The awesome thing is if you have Prime, your books will ship in just a couple of days. I have on there some awesome devotions that will help you with your mental health, with forgiveness, with your power of influence. I also have Bible study guides if you're struggling with your devotion time or if you want to dive into the stories of seven ungodly women of the Bible. I almost forgot to share with you my modest fashion coloring books. I have three out right now and the latest is a garden theme. It has florals, inspirational quotes, scriptures, and of course, beautiful, modest fashion illustrations that anyone at any age can color and have fun with. Thank you guys for supporting the ministry of Hello Awesome. Be sure to check out my books on Amazon. And just because there won't be any new podcast episodes does not mean there won't be any new books. So be sure to check those out. I'm going to go into Luke 15 verses 1 through 7. This came to my mind a couple weeks ago, and um, I've been mulling over, (laughs) praying about it, and it's awesome when the Lord confirms his word. Luke 15, 1 through 7. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. Gasp. (laughs) And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it? And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep, which was lost. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth. repenteth more than over 90 and nine just persons which need no repentance. Tonight, with the help of the Lord, I'm going to be speaking along this title, Waiting for Another One. Waiting for Another One. (laughs) I'm going to ask my favorite father-in-law if he could pray for us tonight. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. So I don't know, um, you might remember this. I was um, reading this scripture, and then I remember the, these headlines from a couple years ago, and I looked it up, and it was actually three years ago. You might remember this when, I, when I'm sharing this, but there was a, 
a sheep in Australia, and it actually made international news and became a viral social media sensation. I'm sure he didn't know that was going to happen. <laughs> but you might remember these photos or even videos that were circulating of this lost sheep that was found in a forest by a property maintenance worker. The sheep was actually pretty unrecognizable. It was covered in a mass of wool that was so large and matted that his eyes could barely stay open. His body completely invisible at a glance with the wool completely overtaking him. A local animal sanctuary received the sheep and named him Brock. Barak, I don't know, ba, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, it has two A's in it, so I think it's play on words. But So that tell, t- tells me that when they found him, he had no identity marker. They actually said in the article I was reading that there was evidence of an ear tag, but it must have uh, fell off or tore off by the growing of the thick wool around his face and his head. Now, Barak was a domesticated sheep, the sanctuary concluded, since wild sheep go through their own natural shedding according to the seasons. So it's obvious that this sheep once had a shepherd, one that would maintain his wool, his overall health, take care of his needs, and watch over him. But without his shepherd, Barak was in rough shape, wandering and lost, walking around with a heavy weight. After the rescue, the sanctuary staff gave Barak a good shearing and found that the fleece weighed in at about 78 pounds. The video of his transformation took the internet by storm, as you can imagine. We love a good makeover. (laughs) And it pulled on TikTok, uh, pulled in more than 18.5 million views. I can't even fathom that. And as I was reading this article, and they interviewed these sanctuary uh, workers, you know, they were the ones who personally handled this lost sheep. And so a couple of things really stood out to me. Without adequate care, a sheep with overgrown wool can host Um, sorry, can host buildup of waste, which can lead to infection and sickness. I didn't think about that, but it makes sense. And so they actually had to be very careful when they removed the fleece. They didn't want to make it worse. And while the wool was a heavy weight, underneath, underneath it, his body was noticeably underweight. He was in need of nutrition and special care, to make him strong again. In the article title, it read, Barack is getting more confident, more confident every day. And this quote from one of his caretakers said, he is doing so well today, surprising us really, and becoming more trusting too. We truly believe that he understands what we have done for him that it has eased his life and turned it for the better. You know, it's my understanding as I was finishing this article, I wasn't even sure I was going to include it, but the more I read it, the more God kind of illuminated some things about his story. This lost sheep with an extreme mass of wool, seven, over, over 78 pounds, so matted that it tore off his ear tag, so dirty that he could be sick, And he showed up at this animal sanctuary. And they knew that they had to be very careful how they handled him. You see, he probably had a lot of trauma. He probably had a lot of things that he didn't know what was happening. Rough hands could have damaged his health even further. Loud or aggressive voices could have added to the emotional distress that he already experienced. They couldn't just start shearing and grab him and rush the process, not knowing where the wool ended and his body began. They had to take their time and take care of his needs layer by layer. 
1 Peter 2, 9 and 10. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people. I can never say that word. That ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Amen. This year's theme at Ladies' Conference, I know some of you went, um, was called Chosen. And uh, it was honestly one of the best conferences that I have been to in a very long time. And I'm not just saying that because it's Connecticut. It really was amazing. And the Lord reminded me of this, this scripture, which was one of the uh, scriptures, I think the scripture for the theme, while preparing for this message. Because we did not have this blessed life before. Even if we were born into the church, the life you have now is different than when you were a child. But now we do. We had to go through a transformation as we became part of his flock. And now here we are. By the love and mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ, we were made new. And the weight of what was, thankfully, no longer is. And I am so thankful that what weighed us down in the past does not have to be part of our story now. And aren't you thankful for a shepherd who found you and met every need that you had and is still with you every day? Amen? Amen. He found us. He heard our pitiful cry, and he rescued us. We did not save ourselves. 1 Peter 2, 21 through 25. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example, that ye should follow his steps, who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth, who when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not. That's hard. But committed himself to him that judgeth righteously, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin, sins should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. For ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. Thank you, Jesus. Shepherd as in pastor, bishop as in overseer. Jesus is both and so much more. Jesus gave us an example. He did not respond to them with the same treatment that they gave him. When they cursed him, he did not curse them back. When they threatened him, he did not threaten them back. He didn't get lost in the weeds of all the politics and the antics and the distracting noise like we tend to do. Because his suffering had a bigger purpose, to return the lost sheep who had gone astray. We were as sheep going astray, but are now returned. We are now where we belong, part of the flock with the great shepherd. Thank you, Jesus. Hopefully that encourages you tonight. And lately I have to confess that I have been kind of in this in-between emotional place of rejoicing that I am no longer a lost sheep, while at the same time praying for those sheep who are still lost and wandering. That's not easy. And I feel like this has been a theme every time I get up here, but it's true. And during prayer recently... This parable of the lost sheep kind of popped into my mind, and the Lord spoke to my heart. And this is what I felt he said to me. Will you be content if you were part of the 99 when the shepherd goes to rescue the one? What is your attitude like during the waiting of the sheep who are lost? You know, it's okay to read this parable in Luke and identify with the lost sheep because we were that. 
We should never be complacent to the fact that we did not save ourselves. And the reason that we're even here is because Jesus found us. But sometimes we like to think of ourselves as the center. (laughs) And we tend to think of ourselves as the one who was lost because we were lost. And that is true. And sometimes we still wander. But thankfully, hopefully, the distance back home is not as far. But have we ever thought about the perspective of the 99 as they waited for another one? The parable of the lost sheep was a response to the accusation, this man receives sinners and eats with them. This was Jesus' response to the scribes and the Pharisees who were trying to pin him to this mentality that they wanted him to have. No, Jesus, you don't understand. See, we're here they're over there. And it stays that way. There's no fellowship. There's no overlap. There is a division of classes for a reason, a division of people, especially in those days. And so the church people were furious that this Jesus was mixing with the wrong kinds of people. They were unclean. We're righteous. We stay here. They stay there. They eat their thing, we eat our thing. And that's it. Also, there was this attitude of just refusal to teach the unclean God's word or to love them the way God would love them. They refused to have fellowship with them and have relationship with them. Then this Jesus comes along and ruins all of their comfortable, self-righteous lives. And he uses this illustration of a lost sheep and asks, what man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it? He's asking, no, think about it. If you had a flock, wouldn't you go and to find him? It's a lot of money. (laughs) It's your property. You're giving your sheep more respect than you would give this unclean person. And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders rejoicing. See, this tells me that and a lot of other contexts tells me that the Pharisees and the scribes were not joyful when the tax collectors and the sinners drew near to Jesus. Because how dare they leave the box that they put them in? Jesus, why are you wasting your time? They might get touched for a moment, but they'll be back out there again. What's the point? Let's not act like we haven't heard those words before. We might even have said those words before. And I wish it wasn't true. But honestly, some of us are just so jaded and irritated (laughs) that Jesus would even bother with someone who is lost sometimes. Just like in the scripture. Oh, they'll never be saved. By us, no. But all things are possible with God. And I'm thankful that he does not take my advice. So let us not cast doubt on any soul that still has time to make it. Because Jesus knows the sheep, and he knows the wolves disguised as the sheep. And he knows the inward man, and Jesus knows their motives and their heart. And if a real sheep wandered off, he would move to bring them back home. I know the wandering has made you heavy, and I know that your wool is overgrown, And you can't see straight because of the weight. But the shepherd is going to pick you up and carry you rejoicing that you have been found. And he's going to share the good news with everyone. When the shepherd brings in another one to the flock, we do need to check our attitudes. Meet them where they are, layer by layer. We can't expect them to be 100%. (laughs) It's going to take time as the Lord lovingly sheds away the weight 
of sin, all of that wool and fleece from being gone and lost for so long. So what is our attitude as the 99 in the flock? When the shepherd brings home another one, how do we talk to them? How do we treat them? How do we love them? Our actions, not just our words. It's not our job to micromanage how the shepherd oversees his flock. I'm thankful for that. I am his sheep. I'm not the shepherd. I am no better than the one who was lost because it was him who found me. It was him who found you. And we are here today, unfortunately not because we're so smart that we figured it out. <laughs> no, we were lost in sin and Jesus pulled us out. And so when I see the shepherd carrying in another one on his shoulders through this sheepfold and he is rejoicing, I'm going to rejoice and be excited. Another one has come home. I'm not going to worry about the details. I'm not going to worry about all the little things that I can't control. I'm going to rejoice when they come home. Because I may have stayed close this time, but I can easily be wandering around tomorrow. You are here today because Jesus found you. It was his love and his mercy that put you on that pew or brought you to this live stream or the Zoom call. And you may have needed to repent and turn away from some things. But even that ability comes by the grace of God. Being able to repent is a gift that we can turn away and say, okay, I'm not going to keep wandering and staying lost. I'm going to go follow the voice of the shepherd. Amen? I do feel like I have to put a disclaimer. <clears throat> this message did not come from my experience. It may seem like I'm teaching from it. But I was in the Word, and the Word spoke to my experience. And I want to just reiterate that when you allow the voice of the shepherd to lead you, he will speak into your life and speak into what you're going through. I don't want to be a part of the 99 who are waiting with bitterness. Jesus already took my weight away. Why am I going to invite more? Now, I'm sorry if you've been hurt while in the flock. I get it. I understand. But it is not God's will for his sheep to be wounded. It's not. But sometimes we refuse to let the shepherd tend to that wound. And it's creating tension within the flock. And sometimes it can create infection. There is no peace or joy. Just a sour, spiteful, bad attitude. And I don't know about you, but I do not want to have that inside of me when he brings in another one. It reminds me of the brother of the prodigal. Dad is rejoicing over his lost son, and he throws a celebration. He's so happy. And what does the, what does the brother who is abiding back home do? How does he feel? Luke 15, 25 through 32. Now his elder son was in the field, and as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry and would not go in. So there's a party happening. They're celebrating good things. But he's so upset he does not even want to go into the house. And so it says, therefore came his father out, and it treated him. What a good dad. Son, what are you doing out here? What's going on? I hope we can be, <laughs> um, man, that sensitive as a parent. And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgress I at any time thy commandment. I didn't do anything wrong. I haven't done anything wrong. And yet thou never gavest me a kid, the fat calf, that I might make merry with my friends. 
But as soon as this thy son was come, notice he didn't say his brother, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, the father said, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad. For this thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. He is saying, don't worry when I bless him. It does not take away from your blessings. You are still mine too. So be glad, rejoice. Your brother was dead in his sins, in his life, but is alive again. He was lost and now is found. Rejoice with me that he is home. And I never thought about what the prodigal brother, you know, must have been feeling as he waited. But this kind of give me, gives me a little glimpse into his heart. And of course, I had to pray about my heart. <laughs> and so my prayer tonight is that none of us who are part of the 99 will withhold our rejoicing. That as Jesus carries in another one and another one and another one and another one, a continuation throughout the rest of our life on earth, on this side of heaven, and shears the weight of sin layer by layer, and we go through the process all over again that we do not grow weary, that we are right there with fellowship and care, rejoicing with love the best way that we can, ushering them into the word and into the flock. Do not let those who have wandered off keep you bitter about the lost. I know it's hard. We've invited people. We've loved on people. We've prayed with people. We've worked with people. But they have free will. But do not let your personal wounds weigh you down like overgrown wool. As we wait for another one, I hope and pray that we can wait with joyful expectancy, trusting in the shepherd who once carried us. He can do it again. In John chapter 6, Jesus feeds the 5,000 and he walks on the water. And after these two miraculous events, Jesus teaches his disciples that he is the bread of life. He's setting a foundation for them, knowing very soon that there's a cross he must be sacrificed on. But not everyone believes, as the story goes. And when Jesus calls them out on their unbelief, some leave his side and don't return. Hard truth does that sometimes. John 6, 66 through 69. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. And then Jesus, and then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life, and we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. I do have a soft spot for Peter. He's human like me. We like to pick on him all the time. Oh, he didn't have enough faith, and he sank even though he was the only one that stepped out. <laughs> and he denied the Lord, and the rooster called him out. We like to pick on him about that too. But Peter stayed in the flock, and he allowed the correction of the Lord to change him. And he eventually preached a message in the book of Acts that led to the New Testament revival of the first church. People will always highlight your mistakes and downplay your victories. But we are being kept, and we are part of his flock. And Jesus is our shepherd, so to whom shall we go? So here's the beautiful truth about the Lord. He can be both with us right here and be with those who are wandering. He can keep us and save the lost at the same time. Jesus is the omnipresent God and Savior, the great shepherd over all souls. To whom shall we go? Let him lead us. Let him change us. Let him tend to the weight on our shoulders. 
as the Lord prepares us to receive another one and another one and another one. Ask him to help us to have an attitude of love while we wait. And not bitterness and not let anything that happened in the past dictate or, 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 I had it written down a certain way, but you know how this happens. So ask him to help your attitude be one full of love, to not let past experiences or hurt dictate your future fellowship, how you treat people in the days to come. So I pray that we don't withhold blessings, that we don't withhold kindness, or be discouraged of the investment that they'll need. He's out there right now. He's working right now. I know sometimes it's hard to see because we're looking at numbers and we're looking at bodies, but that is not what the Lord is worried about. He's looking at hearts. And there are more lost sheep that are going to be coming in this sheepfold. And when they do, I wonder who will rejoice with the great shepherd over the alive and over the found. You may stand. I do want us to take some time to rejoice together. And I know I do this a lot because it's a Wednesday night, shaking you up and waking you up, but I do want to invite you to come to the front to step out where you are, and we are just going to thank Jesus for saving us, for carrying us. We are going to give him praise for his goodness and for his loving kindness. And I want us to also... Let's ask him for a rejoicing heart over those souls who will soon join us. That there is a promise of addition to the house of God. And I want to make sure that while I wait, while you wait, that we are waiting with joyful expectancy. Amen. Let us rejoice. If you found this episode inspiring or helpful, would you take a screenshot of it and share it on your Instagram stories? Tagging me at Hello Awesome Live. I would be so encouraged. Also, please leave a five-star review in iTunes or Apple Podcasts sharing how God used this to bless you. Until next time, keep your chin up, beautiful.